This is the first section of chapter four on correlation, and this section is all about correlation. So let's go through what we need to know about correlation. Well, when we do correlation, we know that the data comes in pairs. Um, this is called bivariate data. We know that correlations can be positive, negative, or there may be no correlation. We can describe the strength of a correlation as being weak or strong. So we could have a strong positive correlation or weak positive correlation or a strong negative or weak negative correlation. Now, correlation does not imply causation. Two variables may have a causal relationship, but not have a correlation. So, for example, when the temperature increases, we may find that more people unfortunately drown in the water. Now, does that mean that as the temperature increases, the temperature is causing people to drown? No, it's no correlation. It's what we call a, is causation. It gets warmer. It's causing more people to go out into the water and the, you know, more people in the water. Unfortunately, more people are going to drown. So we describe it as a causal relationship. Something is causing something else to happen, but it's not a correlation. There's a there's a, a difference between the two. And whenever we do any questions, always describe relationships in the context of the question. So don't just write down positive or negative correlation. Look at what the context of the question is and describe your relationship in those terms. Example one, in the study of a city, the population density in people per hectare and the distance from the city center in kilometers was investigated by picking a number uh, of sample areas with the following results. So different areas, the distance from the city center and the population density. Uh, part A, we want to draw a scatter diagram to represent this data. So I'll start by drawing my axes. OK, so here's my axes. Don't forget to label them as well. Now we're going to plot these points. So there's all of our points plotted in part A. Part B, describe the correlation between distance and population density. So they seem to be going in this downward direction. So in terms of the correlation, I would say that it looks like a weak negative correlation, a strong positive correlation would be that they're all much more lined up, but they're a bit more spread out. So we'll describe it as a weak negative correlation. Now in an exam, if you just described it as a cor negative correlation, that should be fine. Now part C, interpret your answer to part B. So this is now in terms of the question so, or part C could say write down the relationship between the distance and the population density. So looking at this, the further you live away from the city, the lower the population density. Or you could say the opposite to this and say that the closer you are to the city, the city centre, the higher the population density. Example two, Hideko was interested to see if there was a relationship between what people earn and the age at which they left education or training. She asked 14 friends to fill in an anonymous questionnaire and recorded the results in a scatter diagram so you can see them here. So we have the age at which they left education or which their training ended and what their pay is. Part A described the type of correlation shown. So there is a sort of downward trend, but it's very weak. It's not strong at all. We've got this point out here that doesn't really fit it. So I would say that it's a very weak negative correlation. And I would expect on a question like this, you would need to mention the word weak because it's not completely obvious that it's a correlation. We can see it going downwards, but we would at least need to use the word weak or very weak negative correlation. Part B. Hadeko says that her data supports the conclusion that more education causes people to earn a lower hourly rate of pay. 
Part B, give one reason why Hideko's conclusion might not be valid. Well, I've given three different reasons, uh, and we'd probably choose one of one of these. So first of all, her sample is small. Uh, she only asks 14 people. Secondly, her sample is biased. It's not representative of the population. She actually asks their friends only. And this is an example of something that we call opportunity sampling. That's where you ask people that happen to be there at the time. And if they fit what you're looking for, uh, then you carry on questioning them. If not, you move on to the next person. And also the oldest person in her sample or the oldest people in her sample are only 23. There's no one over the age of 23. So it does not indicate how pay progresses as people get older. If we included older people, it may show greater rates of pay. So you should now be able to do exercise 4A on pages 61 to 62 of the textbook.